came to talk to you today about the city of Broomfield and our local insights report we do for April. Um, here we have one of the cities that has had probably some of the most record appreciation in the entire Denver metro area, um, even just because of its proximity to Boulder and Denver and all of the, the infrastructure and highways, it's been an amazing place to live. And you can really see here just how little supply is left. You know, we are seeing things turn over so, so fast. You're seeing a really good amount of appreciation in the market here at about 15%, which is very real appreciation. The only problem is these year over year numbers are incredibly unreliable because we were in the shutdown last year. So you're seeing a much more normalized spring market take place here in Broomfield. And with only 31 homes on the market, but 91 sales, you can really see just how quickly these homes are turning over. And there are you know, lots of bidding wars, all the fun stuff that we're experiencing everywhere else. Ignore those year over year numbers, like I said, they're not as reliable, but month over month, you can really see the seasonality starting to take place with 23% more under contracts than there were um, the previous month. The nice thing about this is we're really seeing, you know, a healthy high level of appreciation in the Broomfield market. It's not too late to get in. People are asking if we're in a bubble all the time and all these other things. But what you can really see here is consistent growth, consistent appreciation in the marketplace. And, you know, it does bounce around a little bit because there's not a ton of sales taking place in Broomfield right now. That $84,000 year over year number is probably pretty reasonable that you gained about that much on your house if you were about on the average sales price. Um, if you look here at this one, the nice thing is with all of this inventory still coming to market, we're seeing a good healthy number of sales taking place. May, April and May last year were where the shutdown was. We will way outpace that blip on the radar that we saw from with the COVID incident. And we will see um, this kind of trend towards that June, July time where the most sales are taking place. So continue to watch this grow. You can see we're already almost 3% over where we were last year. And if you come over here to the month supply of inventory, this really kind of paints the picture as to how, how incredibly low supply levels are. You know, we normally sit at a balanced market at that four to six months range. Here we are at 0.34, which is less or more than 10% below or 10 times below where the normal is for a balanced market where the buyer and seller would be on even footing. So here in this market, you know, it's definitely a seller heavy market. They kind of write all of, have all the, have all the cards as they say, right? So the one thing to be concerned about here is that we really need the inventory levels to increase, but we really just can't build fast enough. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of things that look like they're going to adjust um, how much people will be purchasing. So you can see here in the days on market, it looks like over time, all we've seen is increased buyer behavior and buyer activity all the way through last year and into this year, where now we're at this perfect storm where lots and lots of houses are, are going in, you know, 13 days under contract or less, right? So this number is, is the lowest we've ever seen in these markets. You know, usually when they get around 20 or something like that, we're already concerned that this is such a strong seller's market, it's gonna be hard to compete. Well, everybody's having a hard time competing, but at least there's a lot of equity in homes that can really help people bridge those gaps if they don't appraise. If you have any other questions or concerns, please reach out to me. I'm Anthony Meisner at Land Title, and I'll see you in the next video.